today. We are streaming directly from Copenhagen Fashion Week, and uh, this is our first talk about jewelry. And uh, we have a lot of you uh, following out there. And if you have uh, any questions, feel free to write them in the chat, and we'll make sure to follow up afterwards. So um, I'm here today with Charlotte Lyngo and Søren Lyngo from Ole Lyngo Copenhagen. And um, before we go into the subject we're going to talk about today, I would love a short introduction from both of you. Charlotte, would you like to start about your role in the company and, and everything? I'm Charlotte Lingard. Um, I'm the creative di director of Ole Lingard, and it's a family brand. My father, our father, started the brand almost 60 years ago, and um, yes, so it's a really family company, so it's a short introduction. That's perfect. Yeah, I'm Søren Lingard, uh, I'm the CEO of the company, yeah. and uh, we are very much, uh, yeah, as Charlotte say, a family business, and it's a, a, it's a business where we really emphasize uh, craftsmanship and uh, design is sort of our core values uh, to, uh, for brand. Yeah. yeah, so Ole Lingard Copenhagen is uh, such a strong uh, an international fine jewelry brand with a lot of heritage and uh, it started in Denmark. You still have your flagship store, your headquarter and your production facilities here in Denmark. Why have you chosen to, to be in Denmark and not outsource everything? Well, I, I think it's been from we were children. We always uh, grew up around the workshop, uh, around the jewelers. Uh, Charlotte is a trained jeweler uh, herself, so so for for us, uh, it's very natural uh, and very important part of our of, of our legacy uh, to to have a, a, a in-house production, and uh, and I think it's a huge advantage for a brand uh, with our designers uh, being able, our designers, my father Ole and uh, and Charlotte, being able to work closely together with the jewelers uh, every day. Uh, and my, I've always thought that if we outsourced uh, all our production, it would just be a matter of time before we had to outsource uh, also the, the model department, uh, because all the synergies you get from production to model department is really, really important, and you, you find a lot of uh, um, huge advantages of having these two things close together. So having that in, in, in Hellerup, north of Copenhagen, is a very big advantage for us. Yeah, because you're quite a few people sitting there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. working every day. Yes. So, but are there any like disadvantages in having it here in Denmark? Um. There's one, <laughs> it's not a disadvantage, but um, when you have everyone close by and you can just run down, run up, um, you also, there's no limit. So sometimes it's like everything is possible. That's a good thing, of course, but sometimes it's also you press uh, everyone a little bit more because like, no, no, we can do it, we can do it. Um, it's, uh, so it, I think for, it's, it makes an enormous energy and uh, like everyone in, is involved, but of course, um, sometimes almost impossible things um, we just pr press the, the limit a little bit. Yeah. So. so you've never been tempted to move the production to somewhere else in the world? No. <laughs> you have uh, new members of the board or new members in the, in the, in the, in the, in the leadership of the, the company. You, you, it's often a question, of course, why don't we outsource the production? Why do we have... Uh, 40 jewelers sitting uh, in Hello up north of Copenhagen on an expensive uh, <laughs> address. Uh, why not move everything away? But when you know our company and you know the way that we work, it really makes sense. Um, and also because we make high-end jewelry, uh, so if you sell uh, very uh, inexpensive products, uh, then uh, the labor is a very big part of the of the end price, but uh, with our designers, they they like to do more expensive uh, jewelry or cost costly jewelry, uh, and and uh, therefore the the amount of uh, hours 
doesn't count as much in the in the end price. Uh, so I, so it, it makes really good sense for us the flexibility and everything. We also have uh, production outside uh, Hello, outside Copenhagen, uh, and uh, so so it's not. Uh, only in Copenhagen, uh, we have a very good partner outside uh, Milan, uh, where we produce uh, some of our jewelry, uh, and we have our silver collection that we produce in Bangkok. Uh, so we have outsourced production also, uh, but to have a real production close is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Also, that we can, for, for us, like the pink press, it's, it's really part of our jewelry. It's a uh, when we do a new uh, piece of jewelry, we always think in the long term, it has to be a piece which is, uh, you feel very uh, modern or right now uh, and feel it is right, but also it has to be just as right in 100 years or something. Yeah. And that, and, it, and with, when it comes to the handcraft and the design and everything, so a lot of the jewelry, uh, it's a very uh, long, um, how to say? It's, they are, yeah, it's a very long process uh, from the de from the idea to the design mm -hmm. to everything. Yeah. Um, and, and and that leads me to my next que question, actually, because I know you're a very creative soul, and there's so much things happening in like when you you touch things and you you're like really into the creative process. What's what's a day like for you at the office, if we could call it an office? Um, there's no, yeah, not two days that I like, but um, I'm also people are very often asking, are, are you sitting somewhere else or where are you, like, where do you get your ideas or you, but actually I'm very much in, uh, in the workshop, uh, in Hedderup, in uh, where we have everything, because I th I'm surrounded there with, uh, stones uh, with the people with the um, workshop um, so I like to I really like to have to use my fingers and to for me it's it's I've always loved to do things by hand uh, and I've always loved to see things develop um, so yes so I f the, a, a very good day for me is when I when I really have been working um, and and seeing something uh, develop, and of course there are days where you are, you have your ups and downs because some days you're like oh because you have had this idea for such a long time and it's just so difficult to really uh, get the piece out the way you want it. But um, so <laughs> it's more. F but but then other days you just like almost high because yes. Uh, it's you have a success or yeah. something, yeah. But I also think it's really fun to watch from the outside. I'm not creative myself, uh, so it's fun to. It's not only jewelry that Charlotte is uh, deeply involved in. It's also all our uh, advertising, all our view uh, looks, all our uh, windows displays, uh, shop and shop solutions, and everything where where. If you see our new f uh, uh, window in, in our flagship store in Copenhagen, uh, it's a beautiful window, but it's also a lot of elements, handcrafted elements, uh, like small uh, mirrors and uh, a, a broom, uh, a, 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 a comb. Uh, so it's it's but it and everything is 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 made in our workshop uh, or in our creative area. So it's it's not just jewelry, it's a whole universe around it. And that's what I think is so fantastic about uh, and Charlotte's... Crazy. Uh, <laughs> and crazy. super annoying <laughs> about Charlotte, <laughs> is that uh, you know her fingers are everywhere and it's not just a piece of jewelry, it's a universe. Uh, and that's what I think is makes it easier uh, to to create a brand uh, because yeah. there's so much more than just a piece of jewelry. Yeah. And I was thinking, because you were just mentioning the workshop, why don't we go to your workshop and take a small trip? Yeah. I'm quite sure that there's someone there ready to mm. speak with us. Mm. Yeah. 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 Sounds like exciting. Great idea. <laughs> Sounds exciting. So um, we're live here with uh, <laughs> Johannes Bell <laughs> at yeah, your. That's correct. Workshop and uh, and Johannes, uh, could you tell us a bit about 
your day and your creative process and what what goes on right now? Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you for having us and welcome here at um, the model workshop at Ole Lingard and Hello. My name is Johannes. Uh, I'm head of the product development at Ole Lingard. So I work very closely together with Charlotte and Ole and Sophia, our designers. And in here we have the model workshop and this means this is where a lot of the the, the creative ideas and design starts. Uh, as as Søren mentioned also, uh, uh, Charlotte is a trained juror, Ole is a trained juror and, and um, they come with all their ideas here. Either they come with um, drawings, wet molds, or they shape something themselves in, in silver or gold. Uh, as you can see here, um, this is, shows a little bit about the, the journey, the very long journey sometimes, as Charlotte also said. Uh, here we have Morten. Morten, who has been here for more than 40 years. Uh, and actually uh, were training Charlotte in the, in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. um, he's right now working on molding a snake ring. And um, as we have on the jewelry uh, room show uh, this year, also a new uh, Pitsy snake ring. Um, so, and as we can see here, uh, as Charlotte explains, there is this, this first snake collection it took several years to make. So there is, when you ask about how, how our days are here, <laughs> it's a lot of work with the designers and it's a lot of work back and forth. Um, as Charlotte mentioned, um, um, Charlotte and our designers really thrive to make it a, as, 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 as perfect as possible. And our designers really don't accept accept the pieces unless it's exactly what they want. So there are a very, very long journey before the items are just exactly like the designers want. So our every day is working together with the designers and giving them, making their dream come true actually. Yeah. Um, and as you can see here also, um, it's also our job to, when we have make the pieces together with designers and when the pieces has been approved we will um, we will put it up and set it up for production and um, one of a big part of the journey is also to set it up for production it's quite actually a very very difficult task because our jewelry is very organic it's very different, it's, it's high-end, and we work a lot with special um, cut and, and very amazing precious stones. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really difficult setting it up for production, getting the exact right look as, as Yala wants. And as you can see here, we have a small selection of, of, of the stones that are being set into the snake pizzi ring. You can see the stones vary, of course, in color. And because it's different um, type of, of precious stones, they have different hardnesses. And then often they can vary a little bit in size. But this just makes our pieces very unique um, and very, very special. But as you can see, Thomas over here is sitting. He's right now sitting um, a lapis lazuli stone. This is a stone to be known as quite soft. It's very unique because it has different types of matrix in, in all the stones. Mm -hmm. And if you hit the stones, if he hits the stone one time, he needs to start over. So you have to be a very patient yeah. person to do this. This is amazing. Yeah, and actually then over here in the corner we have uh, Matthias and um, He's working on also one of our new pieces that is a, a leaf brooch. Uh, our designer uh, is very, very inspired by nature. And um, again, this makes our pieces very, 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 I would say, sophisticated. And, and what our designers like is to combine many, many different techniques and metals also. Yeah. You can see here. Actually, what I think makes this piece so really, really beautiful 
is the combination that you have the rose gold, you have the yellow gold, you have the white gold with the pave settings, and you have all the different surfaces. And this is where I think our designer, Charlotte, Ola, and Sophia, they never, they never compromise. They, they sell, it should be absolutely perfect. And this is a, Beautiful. in many ways, this is a very, very time consuming piece to make because you have to make all the different surfaces and, and how long it. would it take to make a piece like that if you you have the design well for, first of all there is the long journey of the development and yeah. the design um this leaf collection actually came from the from the from the tiara uh, Shala started uh, years ago and and um, this, this, these satinized surface has been a big signature of, of, of our company. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say it's, um, it's very time consuming to make this piece. Yeah. Putting minutes on it, you cannot do. We have pieces that, that takes, doesn't take that long. And we have pieces that take up to a month. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it varies a lot. Um, Thank you so much. All our goldsmiths, they can make whatever they want. They can yeah. choose the piece they want to make. Okay. But but we have goldsmiths who prefer pieces that take several weeks, and we have goldsmiths that prefer pieces that goes a little bit faster. That is such a nice uh, explanation. And uh, <coughs> being behind the scenes at, at your workshop is very yeah. special because um, you never really get to to see what's really no. going on. So thank you, you very, very much, much Johannes. Uh, what? Thank you. Well done. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you, bye. Bye. <laughs> so, um, wow. There is a, a lot of things going on there, I can tell. Yeah. And, and it's really amazing, and, and you get like an understanding of how many hours just a single piece has taken to produce and to develop and everything. But it's also, the, 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 I think the, the snake collection is a really fun example of uh, my father wanted to create a, a snake collection uh, inspired by his travels in Egypt in the 60s. Uh, and, and, uh, and then he made this snake collection and uh, it took, all, took almost a year and, uh, and he was ready to present it for the sales team. And uh, it, he was sitting in his office with this tray with the snakes, and uh, and he was looking at it. And then I came past his desk, desk, and and he said, "Do you like my snake collection?" And I said, "Yes, it's a very nice snake collection. It's not very Ole Lingard, but it's a nice snake collection." And he said, "That's exactly how I feel. It's not okay. an Ole Lingard collection." So he cancelled everything. So the salespeople had to go and sell something else, and we started all over. No way. And uh, used another year to make the snake collection that you've seen uh, now, uh, you know now. Uh, so that's can. really a, a, an example of there's no compromise. No. Uh, so that's. No, we never we never launch anything that no. we don't feel uh, comfortable with. No. Uh, and very often, um, I have been wearing pieces. And now also my, my daughter's wearing pieces for half a year before we launch it to feel how do they, how do they feel the earrings? Uh, are they comfortable? Are they, how is it to wear it? Because I think it's so important that the jewelry gets like part of you. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you feel mm, maybe it looks nice, but it's not really comfortable or it doesn't feel right. It, it's really, really important uh, to feel and to wear and to, the jewelry before we launch them, um, yeah. and all the jewelry we have in the collection, whether it's my father's or mine, or um, it's something that I would wear or yeah. am wearing. Uh, so and such a privilege that that you can do that. Yes. So, so being this luxury brand um, is quite a, a position, and you're working really hard to to maintain this and to grow. But how has it been being in this whole new world situation, pandemic era? Um, I think, I what I think have you for, for companies that has uh, experienced crisis before, it has been maybe more easy uh, than, than newer companies. 
Uh, we knew uh, in March when uh, I came home with Corona from skiing holiday oh my God. <laughs> that uh, that uh, that we had to react fast. Mm -hmm. We had to do something drastic uh, because we. I think the the most important thing is the company. We uh, we have to we have to make sure that uh, that we have the company uh, for many years to come. So mm -hmm. you have to make some decisions that make sure that the company is here in the long term. Uh, and that's, of course, hard decisions. We had to, to say goodbye to some very, very s uh, skilled people uh, yeah. in, our, in our team. And that's, of course, uh, very sad. Uh, but you have to think about the company in the long term. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's quite fun. We are launching now uh, the, 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 the chains with the, with the small uh, class uh, oh. uh, system. Yeah. Uh, and my father... Uh, relaunched it. Yeah, it's, re it's a relaunch <laughs> of my father's old clasp. Uh, and he said that clasp saved the company in 1979. Oh, really? Uh, I get goosebumps. <laughs> without <laughs> that, uh, the company would have been bankrupt. <laughs> so, so it's really uh, it it's fun to have these things that... Yeah. But we didn't, uh, we didn't, we already, it was already a plan before, yeah, 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 before, okay. the before the corona. Yeah, yes. it's not a corona thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's just, uh, yeah. it's fun that that, again, Comes and is very yeah, there's some some symbolic value yeah. in yeah. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. nice. And and um, what about like being Danish in Scandinavia in Europe? Has it been has there been a difference in in handling this whole I think situation? It has been a huge advantage to have a production in Denmark. Yes, uh, because we've been able to to uh, serve our customers uh, worldwide uh, in these uh, past months. Yeah. Uh, and especially in Europe, we have really felt a lot of uh, uh, businesses that has really had difficulty to, to get their jewelry from wherever they produce it. Mm -hmm. uh, so for us, it's been a very big advantage to have a production. In so you're yeah. staying in Denmark. Yeah. Yeah. It's been possible for us also to work every day. Yeah. Uh, it's been a bit more silent, but it has been possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think it's also you have had time really to think and to um, so also have a little bit of this space and quietness uh, to just to go more deep into to different, yeah, of course, the designs and, and the whole company and everything. Um, so that's one of the advantages yeah. to have. A one of many. One, one of, of many, many. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but we're also very privileged in, in Scandinavia, I think, or Denmark compared yeah. to other Yeah. So countries. could you say there's some bigger learnings um, from from this whole crisis? Is there anything that you're like, I mean, this something was... something good always comes out of a crisis. Uh, I think that uh, uh, that also in, in good times, it's difficult to to take hard decisions, yeah. where in hard times, it's easier to take hard yeah. decisions. Yeah. Uh, so I think that uh, in a year, uh, when hopefully all this is uh, over, crossed, fingers crossed, yeah. uh, then we will have a, a company that's, uh, that's ready to, uh, to, to, to take new challenges and uh, we have uh, sort of cut off the fat, uh, yeah. to, to, to say it yeah. uh, honestly, yeah. um, and, uh, and, and we are more um, ready for the future, I think. Yeah. So good to know. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. So thank you so much for thank being you. part of this mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, for yeah joining the thank the you. show and the fashion week. And before we finish off, I'd like you, Charlotte, to take us to the jewelry mm -hmm. just over here. Yes. And tell us a bit about the new pieces, items. The items. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I will. Thank you. So. Yes, so um, first I'll get the first zoom in. <laughs> I'll show um, our new gold creoles, uh, which is uh, I'm wearing one, um, and it's a whole system where um, it's actually it's a classic creole uh, in the nature uh, collection. Uh, they're very light, so you almost don't feel you're wearing them, uh, and then you can add different. Um, diamond uh, 
rings or smaller or bigger or so it's a, it, uh, it's a again a playground there are two sizes um, and again it's very important for, important for me that they are comfortable and you can wear them for a t-shirt uh, for every day I think it's very important and we think it's important that the jewelry is something you can wear it you can easily style it um, and and that's also very important this that is one beautiful. Uh, it's also a piece uh, which is with the evil eye, with small diamonds around, and an opal. Uh, my father also used opals, a lot of opals and turquoises. Um, I think it's almost <laughs> 50 years ago. So we still have uh, some pieces. These are from Australia. And uh, we, have, we are working a lot with gemstones from all over the world. Uh, that's something we use a lot of time and energy to find exact right pieces and stones um, which is actually more and more difficult to get and um, sometimes we have them made special for us like the, here the turquoise evil eye um, with the tiger in the middle and the onyx but also sometimes we find pieces and uh, stones which would then put, make a jury around so uh, this is uh, and then you have a shooting star and you can change yeah. And, and, and play again. Nice. This, this is a new uh, snake collection. And that was one of the pieces Johannes was showing us yes. from the workshop? Yes. Uh, my father, as uh, my brother said, that's his uh, design, the snake, but he wants me to say that I have been interrupting a little bit, so <laughs> I have uh, also, <laughs> I'm a little bit, it's a combination of his design and my design. Uh, so. Now the whole snake collection is actually uh, a lot of different uh, styles with different stones uh, and smaller and bigger pieces with and without diamonds. Beautiful. So um, and a the lot collection of colors. is really developing. Hmm? Yeah. And a lot of colors. A lot of colors. Yeah. I love colors yeah. and I think it's, it's again, um, also when you use turquoises, malachite, uh, it's a stone we of course saw a lot like many years ago but it's it's but i think that's it's normal things are coming back again mm -hmm. and i think they're also they're easy to wear because they're opaque they they're a little bit more relaxed more a little bit more bohemian but yeah. still classic uh, pieces and here you also have the chain which was uh, the system we have Sophia yeah, here, Sophia which is, is also part of the company, yeah. and Laura, which is my two daughters, <laughs> and also wearing, uh, as you can see, the different chain. And you open, it's a system that my father, as my, we were talking about, he developed, uh, developed in 74, so it's quite some years ago. Um, so this one is a clasp that has been working for so many years and is still very strong and you can play with it, so you can just change it from one chain to another, and there are different sizes, and they actually go very, very well with the new collection. Yeah. You can't see that it's made so many years ago, and you can also have like on the pearls, different pearls where you can change. So smaller and bigger clasps, um, and we have a lot of different designs with the chain. It's such a clever and very on time uh, relaunch yeah. so yeah and this people ask why do we have these things lying it's not that we forgot to take them away but it's just <laughs> it's just because we it's our powder room it's like the woman's uh, table like what she likes to have be surrounded with her in the morning there what is she going she's going to do her hair put her jewelry on and so that's else. also part of our uh, windows in our flagship stores that's what we are working with our new small um, jewelry boxes uh, which in silk uh, which are very nice to travel with and um, yes always have on you thank you so much Arlen that was a very nice tour of the new pieces we all want right now thank um, thank but uh, they're on the wish list for sure yes so thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so thank much you. for making it possible. Should we say bye and uh, uh, thank you. Follow online <laughs> for the next thing. Thank See you. Ya.